Hi, I'm Dr. Vincent Ho. I'm a gastroenterologist and a senior university lecturer. I'm also the gut doctor. This is a story of diarrhea. Diarrhea is defined as abnormally loose or watery stools. Virtually everyone has experienced diarrhea at some point in their life. But when it persists longer than four weeks, then the diarrhea becomes chronic diarrhea. It's thought that it can affect around 5% of the population and it can be quite troubling. How does diarrhea come about? The best way to understand diarrhea is to do something that most of us do on a regular basis, and that is to check out your stools. We can classify diarrhea as one of three types based upon the appearance of stools, fatty diarrhea, inflammatory diarrhea, or watery diarrhea. Fatty stools, also known as steatorrhea, are suggested by a history of weight loss, greasy or bulky stools that are difficult to flush, and oil in the toilet bowl that requires a brush to remove. A common misconception is that floating stools are indicative of steatorrhea. Floating stools indicate gas production by colonic bacteria, not steatorrhea. Inflammatory diarrhea is characterized by frequent, small volume, bloody stools and may be accompanied by tenesmus, which is the sensation of inability or difficulty in emptying the bowel at defecation, even if the bowel contents have already been evacuated. Fever or severe abdominal pain. Fatty stools come about when fat isn't digested or absorbed properly. The pancreas produces enzymes that are really important for digesting fats. If there is damage to the pancreas, such as from chronic alcohol use, this can lead to scarring of the pancreas, leading to a condition called chronic pancreatitis. This means the pancreas isn't producing enough enzymes to break down fats. Absorption of fats occurs in the small bowel. So if there is disease of the small bowel, then absorption of fats can be impaired. A good example of this is celiac disease where exposure to gluten can result in an immune reaction that leads to damage to the mucosa or lining of the small bowel. Inflammatory diarrhea fundamentally indicates disrupted and inflamed mucosa, such as that caused by inflammatory bowel disease, ischemic colitis, and infectious processes such as Clostridium difficile colitis. Watery diarrhea is exactly that. The stools are watery. Watery diarrhea may be subdivided into osmotic, which refers to water retention due to poorly absorbed substances, secretory, which refers to reduced water absorption, and functional types. Osmotic diarrhea occurs where there is ingestion of substances that are poorly absorbed in the small bowel and results in a lot of water going into and retaining in the small bowel. Consumption of excess ions like magnesium, which can happen with antacids and laxatives, can lead to diarrhea. The most common type of carbohydrate intolerance is lactose intolerance. Ordinarily, the enzyme lactase breaks down lactose into simple monosaccharides, glucose and galactose that can be readily absorbed by the small bowel. However, if there is a deficiency in this enzyme, that means that lactose isn't broken down effectively in the small bowel and reaches the colon intact. Lactose gets fermented by bacteria producing short chain fatty acids, but also gases. This can lead to not only bloating, but also diarrhea. Lactose intolerance is incredibly common around the world. And the important thing to note is that it doesn't cause damage to the bowel, but sufferers that are exposed to lactose can have persistent symptoms. There are other carbohydrates like sorbitol, which is found naturally in berries like blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries, and other fruits such as apples, as well as chocolates and sweets. And xylitol found in substances such as chewing gum that are poorly absorbed in the small bowel. When fermented by bacteria in the colon, they also release short chain fatty acids and in the process can make the stools more acidic. Because osmotic diarrhea is reliant upon ingested substances being poorly absorbed in the small bowel, if fasting occurs and hence none of these substances are in the small bowel, the diarrhea gets better. This may come as a bit of a surprise, but did you know that for an average adult, around nine liters of fluid enters the small intestine each day? The amount of water secreted or produced by the salivary glands, stomach and pancreas totals up to three liters of fluid. And in addition to the amount secreted by the small intestine and the fluid that's found in our food and drinks, 
it adds up to around 9 litres. The vast majority of this fluid is reabsorbed back by the small intestine, and some of it by the colon, with around 100 mils of fluid left in an average bowel motion. Diarrhea will occur when the secretion of water into the small intestine exceeds total absorption. This form of diarrhea is called secretory diarrhea. One of the distinguishing features of secretory diarrhea from osmotic diarrhea is that in secretory diarrhea, the diarrhea will continue despite fasting. There are many causes of secretory diarrhea, but some of these are infections such as cholera, bile acid malabsorption, effects of some medications, microscopic colitis, and rare tumors that secrete diarrhea producing hormones. The final subtype of watery diarrhea is functional diarrhea. Irritable bowel syndrome diarrhea or IBSD subtype is the most common cause of functional diarrhea in the developed world. In IBSD, there is most often crampy abdominal pain accompanied by diarrhea. Usually watery diarrhea will occur while awake and very often following meals. The discomfort is alleviated by passing bowel motions and mucus can often be seen in the stools. I will say that this classification system is a useful primer, but sometimes there is overlap between different types of diarrhea. Medications, for example, are a very common cause of diarrhea and they can work via more than one mechanism. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your questions and comments, so please post them below and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.